when I was first introduced to parallel processing back in the mid-1990s. These were very complex compute systems. And let me tell you, they were very expensive. They were also truly unique systems. The reason for this was nearly every part of a solution was resolved by designing unique hardware components. I want to drive home the point of the design principles for Hadoop by comparing Hadoop's solution to those from earlier years. Now, there is a common problem set, but it's how we attempted to solve this problem set that makes the difference. For example, in the 1990s, when we looked at the problem of how to move large volumes of static data across the network, we resolved this by building out multiple networks to transport the data and to try and build faster and faster networks, even using direct fiber connections. When we looked at the problem of how to move large volumes of transactional data within the system across the back plane, we did this by trying to build faster I.O. boards and building purposely designed back panes for connecting disk to I.O. to CPU. And the problem of how to manage larger and larger volumes of data faster and faster Obviously, build bigger and faster disks, find and build faster CPUs. And when it came to ensuring even job scheduling and fair usage of resources, we solved this problem typically in software, but by far, we always default to, to adding more and more RAM. And when it came to the issues of handling error interruptions, frequently this was a hardware solution. And the most important part, how did we ensure high availability for these mission-critical systems? we identified the single points of failure, and we provided lots and lots of duplication. The point is, our approach tended to be hardware-centric, and this required the designers and the manufacturers to create very specific, very unique hardware with a very limited audience. And trust me, these were very expensive systems. The designers of Hadoop faced all of the same problems, but they took a radically different approach. The creators of Hadoop could not and would not spend huge sums of money buying and maintaining purposely built hardware solutions. Instead, they took what at the time was a very radical redesign to meet the desires for supercomputing. They began by listing five design principles for their new architecture. These included dumb hardware and smart software, share nothing, move processing, not data, embrace failure, and finally, build applications, not infrastructure. Let us explore each of these in turn. One of the driving design principles was use dumb hardware and let's create intelligent, smart, elegant software. This was obviously designed by the very principle that we weren't able to spend large amounts of money buying incredibly expensive hardware, let alone put in requirements for designing unique hardware. So we had to find software solutions for distributed computing. Now, this is a very standard model for a Hadoop cluster. The infrastructure consists of lower-cost commodity servers stored in standard data center racks. We use lower-cost disk drives with very reasonable sizes, well, say as low as 8 terabytes for a hard disk. Each rack is topped with a switch. Normally, these are either 24 or 48-port switches running at 100 gigabits per second Ethernet. Now, the master servers are critical, and they are constructed to a much higher standard of availability. But the primary point here is we can build an entire Hadoop cluster consisting of one master node of 10 racks, each holding 12 data servers, using commercial off-the-shelf hardware for every component in our design. I cannot overstate how huge a shift this was for the supercomputing platforms.